everybody, Brian Boyle here. Welcome to episode 112 of The Mesh Tongue. It is Saturday, and uh, it is a fantastic day here in Utah. Uh, 65 degrees and sunny already in the mid-afternoon. And uh, boy, I spent most of the morning out, so I got a little color, which is unusual for me. I usually try and avoid getting too much color. It's just, uh, just the way it goes. But uh, yeah, big day today. We had uh, Salt Lake Marathon, Half Marathon, the whole race festival today. Had a first time winner. First time marathoner, actually, guy that uh, get, ran his first marathon ever and won the Salt Lake Marathon. So congratulations to Clinton Roten. Fantastic stuff. Always love to see people out there achieving their goals. What uh, what did you do today? Did anybody out there race? Anybody uh, have any uh, uh, good stories to tell? Leave those comments below. I always love living vicariously through racers and uh, and other runners. So you know, absolutely share that uh, share that. And if you had any successes or failures, you know, what did you do? What, uh, uh, you know, that's how we learn. You know, we learn from other people's failures. They don't like to always tell them. But uh, I'm going to give you a few here today myself. Today I want to talk to you about overtraining. Nobody really likes talking about overtraining, but it is something that is certainly very, very easy to do. And how do we overtrain? Well, a number of different things. Um, you know, we are not getting enough sleep we're not stretching and strengthening in the, you know uh, to basically provide the supplemental activities for our running we're not getting enough fuel so we're not eating enough um, we're jacking our mileage too high too quick you know these are all things that can happen when we overtrain and probably the best way to, to look at your overtraining is look at your journal, look at your log, you know, figure out where you're at. Um, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be an injury, but overtraining. So, so for an example, I'll give you my own personal examples. Um, one of the things that I found when I would overtrain, so I would get to a point where my legs would feel like somebody had put cement in my training shoes. I would go to lace those shoes up. And I would absolutely just be miserable. My legs felt heavy. They were tight. I was, you know, putting probably way more effort into my runs than, than I needed to. But uh, still going out and running, you know, and this was when I would teeter around 75, 80, you know, pushing towards that 90 mile a week mark. You know, my legs would start to get just beat. And I would, uh, you know, I would be falling asleep during the day. I, you know, I, you know, middle of the day, falling asleep, um, you know, and uh, and just just miserable, 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 miserable. And those are all symptoms of of overtraining. Um, one of the most common is, uh, you know, is the tired legs, uh, it's the sore muscles. Um, it could be problems sleeping. It could be a elevated heart rate. So if you're, you know, if you're monitoring your heart rate on a daily basis and you, you wake up in the morning and all of a sudden that you notice that instead of hovering around mid 50s for a heart rate now all of a sudden you're up at you know mid 70s and you go oh that's strange wonder why i wonder why my heart rate uh, so a resting heart rate that's elevating you know these are all times that you need to start putting the brakes on or you need to start changing your diet so that you're getting more calories um, or to take those rest days that if you haven't been taking rest days, you've been pushing seven days a week, uh, you know, maybe it's dropping your mileage down. But sometimes, sometimes we don't like to listen to that, do we? We, we, uh, we think, well, you know, more has got to be better. We've, we've got to be, uh, uh, got to be better. Uh, lack of sex drive could be another one. Uh, um, you know, if, if, uh, if you're no longer interested that, uh, that you're just overtraining, you're just starting losing, uh, and, and then the other thing is when you really have to force yourself. If you're normally like, I gotta run, I gotta run, and all of a sudden you're having to force yourself out there. Um, I caught myself plenty of times forcing myself to go out because I was like, well, I gotta put it in my training log, I gotta do this, and, and it's just, you go, is it worth it? Is it worth it? And probably not, because nine times out of ten, what happens when we overtrain is we get to an injury. So you have these symptoms, this cluster of symptoms, um, sore legs. You know, or any one of them by themselves, probably not a symptom or a sign of overtraining. So we talk about clusters, and these clusters could be, well, I've got sore legs, I've got, you know, this kind of uh, aversion to, uh, to, this aversion to running, uh, I'm just, I'm really having to force myself out, and I've got really no interest in sex. Okay, those three, probably a good sign 
that you have some overtraining. Um, if you're putting more energy into your running, like man, normally I'd be at like 60 to 70 percent uh, of effort level. Uh, if I had to gauge it, now I'm at like 80, 90 for the same run. I, I do the same run all the time, and now I'm just dragging. Okay. Um, and you start to get some problems with you noticing that you're sleeping not as well, and then also heart rate coming up. Again, those three could be enough to say, yeah, you're overtraining. And it could be any combination of those. So it doesn't have to be just those three or any combination of three. It could be four, it could be two, it could be whatever. But as soon as you start noticing that, you want to start making adjustments to correct for that. All right. So I would look for symptoms and clusters, and then when you cluster those in, you say, all right, um, you know, I'm not sleeping as well, you know, my heart rate's up, uh, you know, maybe we need to reduce the intensity, okay? Um, maybe it's the, uh, you know, the fact that your legs are just really, really sore and beat up, um, you know, and then, you know, you've got this aversion to running. Maybe what you need to do is run on a different surface. Maybe it's going someplace else uh, and also reducing your mileage. Okay, so we can correct overtraining a number of different ways. So it doesn't just have to be one way, just like there's not just one symptom of overtraining. So don't, don't feel like you've got to be tied into that. But it's, since it's not an exact science, it is going to take a little bit of trial and error. It's going to take some work. It's going to take some effort on your part, for sure. But what should end up happening is you should notice that hopefully if you start changing things for the better, your chance of injury goes a lot lower and that you should not be injured. Because I've been there, I've done that. I'm not afraid to admit it. I've, uh, you know, I've failed plenty more times than I actually succeeded, uh, especially in running. Um, but that's that's all right, okay. And that's 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 how you live and learn, and, and why I'm able to help teach and, and help other people. So, all right, that's it. Episode 112 of the Mesh Tongue. Uh, my name is Brian Boyle. If you have questions, comments, send those to me. Brian B R I A N at company the number five K dot com. I'll be happy to get back to you. It is a Saturday afternoon. Please check out runpainless.com. Share this with your friends, your family, your training partners. And I will see you again tomorrow, Saturday, for, or Saturday, gosh, tomorrow, Sunday, uh, for episode 113. And uh, we'll go from there. Hey, don't go hurt yourself to come back. Take care. Mm -hmm.